The survival of the human race may depend on achieving peaceful coexistence with nature as much as each other, but individual survival is often felt to depend on the conquest of nature. And that means a technology achieved through precise control of the material world. A control based in turn on a precise science. The popular image of mysticism does not include precision as one of its attributes. Mysticism is often used in uh, science and, you know, especially among physicists, in a way which is very misleading and very wrong. Mysticism is not misty, you know, it's not foggy thinking. It's actually, it goes beyond thinking, of course, but it's not fuzzy at all. It is actually described in opposite terms. You see, when, when you use, when you look at the classical texts of Buddhism or Taoism or Hinduism, a mystical experience is often described as a state of awakening, the clear light, a sword cutting through ignorance. These are the classical, you know, traditional terms that are used. Nothing like fuzzy or, or vague thinking. Clarity, actually, is always emphasized in a mystical experience. It's a very clear experience, but it's not a rational experience. It goes beyond rational thinking. There the I goes not. Speech goes not. Nor the mind. We know not. We understand not how one would teach it. Physicists often say, let's not get into mystical speculations. And so it's, it's used as something bad and to be avoided. Now, if I come along and write a whole book and say, the basic findings of modern physics are in strong agreement with the basic findings of mysticism, that must be very threatening to somebody who believes that this is a vague and fuzzy and highly unscientific activity which should be avoided. And so many physicists have been threatened. And I would say it is the uh, most usual reaction, the most common reaction at first to be threatened. Man follows the laws of the earth. Earth follows the laws of heaven. Heaven follows the laws of Tao. Tao follows the laws of its intrinsic nature. In 1973, Capra went to see Werner Heisenberg. He showed Heisenberg the manuscript of the Tao of Physics and asked him for his reaction. Well, that was nothing new to him. He said that he had realized that himself. He had also, you know, hinted at it in his books. But he told me something interesting which I have never read anywhere. And that was that he was the guest of Rabindranath Tagore, the famous Indian poet and philosopher, when Heisenberg was in India. And he had long discussions with Tagore <coughs> about uh, Indian philosophy, about Western science. And Heisenberg told me that these discussions had helped him very much because they had shown him that this new kind of worldview that was emerging from quantum physics was in fact not so crazy. That in fact there was an entire culture, the Indian culture, that was built on uh, the uh, premises of indeterminacy, relativity, uh, interconnectedness, uh, the dynamic nature of the world, the very concepts that emerged from physics. So Heisenberg was well aware of the parallels and very open. And just, you know, to sum it up, he, he said to me when I closed my manuscript, he said, verbatim, basically, I'm in full agreement with you. Now, to me, as an unknown author with a manuscript that was very difficult to sell to a publisher. This was, of course, extremely satisfying, and I left his office very happy and it gave me a real impetus. Mm -hmm.